Good evening, gang. It's Thursday, the 13th of July, 2017. Welcome along to tonight's United Kingdom talk, coming to you always live from the Mirable Studios in Royal Berkshire. I have had such a lovely day today. I really had. We had the quiz last night, of course, at the uh, King's Head Theatre Bar in Islington every night. That was lovely. Really nice. I think we had six teams last night. It's not, not too bad, you know, considering now. It's been a little bit quiet recently, to be fair. Um, but six teams. That, that was a nice night last night. Ray Reynolds and his little team made up of several thousands of people. There was about four of them all together. There was Peter Ward, who does hospital radio, Basildon. Paul was there. And I can never remember the other chap's name with the glasses. Uh, nice man. They only, They came second last night. They were not happy. I think they came second, winning six bottles of Pale Ale. Not my favourite type of drink. I must well, I don't drink at all anyway, really, to be honest. Now and again, I push the boat out and I have a glass of champagne somewhere. Oh, yes, yes, now and again. If we go to a little afternoon tea or something, which we haven't done this year. Usually I go out for a couple of afternoon teas. Uh, not in London, but I tell you, is that straight? Is that straight? Oh, I'm a little bit exposed tonight. I'm looking like one of those Mediterranean rock stars tonight, aren't I? Don't you think? I don't know. Someone like Luciano Pavarotti. Oh. Why is it all opera singers are really big? Is that, something to, is that something to do with their voice? Do you have to be big to have a really good voice? I know lots of skinny people who are good at singing. You don't have to be big. But does it help opera singers? I wonder if that's a fact. Because they are all quite big, aren't they? The boys and the girls when they do their opera singing. What's that? Um, Nelson Dorma. Nelson Dorma. La 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 I always look forward to singing the psalm at church on a Sunday morning. Not not the solo bit. There is a solo bit in the psalm at church. Oh, yes, every week we have a psalm. It'll be something like a, the response from everyone will be something like la, 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 la. And then we all sing it to words, of course. We don't la, la. No, we have words, do you? It's not just la, la. What do you think this is? Some cheap setup, dear? Catholic Church? I don't think so. We're loaded with money. Loaded, dear. Loaded. La, la. And then, and then there'd be the verse, which goes something like, la, 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 or something very similar. And then we all go back to the verse again. La, 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 like that. Oh, it's wonderful, dear. Wonderful. And there's various fat people and skinny people at the mass. And we can all sing. How marvellous is that? Yes. Oh, let's say hello to some of the early people with this tonight. Hello to the lovely Elaine. Glad to see you doing well, Elaine, my darling. Greetings, Elaine. Yes. And uh, I think we do feel, I I've been watching your wall with great interest. I think you need to go with a Marilyn Monroe look. But not just the hairdo, not just the hairdo. You need the fan and the white dress. Oh, yes, my darling. I can see you there in Tel Aviv, standing there on the beach in that white dress with the gold band around your waist and the fan blowing up your knickers. That's what we like to hear, Elaine. <laughs> and all the boys, you can have some gay dancers around you, you know, the muscle sorts doing all their bronze tan dancing. And they put oil on to make themselves shine, don't they? Oh, I can't be doing with oil. Nasty, slippery stuff. I don't like that stuff. You know, especially like even um, suntan lotion. You know, that can be quite oily. I do not like it. I'm very, very lucky. I rarely burn. Look at this tan I've got tonight. Look at it. Look at this. That's because I've been out all day. I've had a wonderful day out, Elaine. Oh, it's been lovely. So after my breakfast, I had a lovely breakfast this morning. I had um, two corn burgers, a tin of baked beans and two two uh, fried eggs in fry light. Then I went swimming. My mate came around about 10 o'clock. We all started early this morning. 10 o'clock we went swimming. And um, then we went to a place called Savile Gardens. Now, this is nothing, <laughs> nothing to do with Jimmy Savile. I'm pleased to see. We weren't visiting his grave. or oh, I don't think he's got a grave anymore. Didn't they dig it up and throw away the headstone? 
If you don't know who Jimmy Savile was, Elaine, he was um, uh, a very famous person here in the UK through the 60s, 70s, 80s and the 90s. He had big radio show, uh, very big on the television. And uh, a few years ago, they found out that he was paedophile, touching up children and all that business. Uh, although he died before they found all this out. And um, uh, they took away his gravestone and, and things like that. And just, you know, variously dis discredit. Horrible man. Horrible man. I and mean, when you watched him on the telly, I have to say he came across as a bit eccentric or strange. But you would uh, you never put kind of two and two together, do you? Apparently it was well known throughout the BBC that all this was going on. We didn't have a clue as the viewers. You know, he was one of our television icons. The same as uh, Rolf Harris and... Um, uh, who's the bloke on... It's a knockout. They were all at it. All at it, apparently. Terrible. Anyway, so Savile Gardens is where we went to today. Uh, nothing to do with Jimmy Savile. It's part of Windsor Great Park. And it's a... Oh, I've had such a nice day. I went with my mate Ron. Um, and uh, it cost uh, £10 to get in. He's a bit disabled, so he got in free of charge. Uh, the the car park also is ten pounds, but that if you go in, if you pay ten pound for a ticket, you get that paid anyway. So it's, so it was only ten pounds. What a wonderful day! It's just all flowers. It's all flowers and plants, and you walk around there uh, completely unhindered. Oh, just stunning! And it's this place is so big. The um, I've never seen so many flowers before in one afternoon, really. They got all different sections, you know. They got the the summer section, the spring section, the winter section, uh, the autumn section, and it's all there. I mean, it really is. We saw the summer flowers today, including some wonderful roses. And I've done lots of video today. I haven't put the show together yet, um, but uh, that will be tomorrow's show. Okay, it's all it's all here on my little camera, waiting to be edited together. <clears throat> there won't be much talking tomorrow. Some of you probably be pleased to hear that, actually. I won't be talking much on the show tomorrow, but it will be lots of pictures of uh, flowers and video of flowers and uh, the rose garden, which is just to die for. Oh, my word. You come around this corner and then this smell of the roses hits you. It's beautiful. Just beautiful. So that'll be tomorrow's show, OK? I hope you're looking forward to seeing that. should be up sort of sometime in the morning tomorrow. Uh, good evening to Alan Diamond Russell. Where's the diamond come from, Alan? Are you dealing in diamonds? Have you become a jeweller or something like that? What do you mean, Alan Diamond Russell? Who says, hi, Chris, I'm at home practising some songs for tomorrow for when I come down. Well, perhaps you'd like to bring your own microphone and lights. Seems that you always moan about the sound and lighting. Why can't you just get on and sing it and shut up, same as everyone else, dear? There's always someone moaning. Oh, dear. I love the karaoke singers. We love karaoke. They just come on, they sing their song, and then they get off. And there's some people like Alan. Oh, oh, can you do this with the sound? Oh, oh, can I have a bit more echo? Oh, all oh, the lights in my eyes. Just get on and sing the bloody song, dear. Surely Batty doesn't come on the stage and say, oh, all oh, the lights are a little bit too bright. Oh, oh, I can't hear the music. Just get on with it, dear, and stop moaning. God's sake, man. You never, ever hear me moan about anything, do you? No. Hi to Terry H up in Leeds, who said, tuned in to see the new, I see the new intro video. Uh, did you like that, Terry? I know it's five minutes long, but it is a five-minute countdown. And it was very plain before. It was the lovely Heidi. The lovely Heidi, who we spoke to on Tuesday night's show, who mentioned that my, my intro video was a bit boring. I mean, me? Boring? How rude! Oh dear. So that's why I did that. That took me five hours. To put, was it five or six hours to put all that together? It's quite a long thing. So uh, I hope you liked it, Terry. You haven't, have you commented yet? I'll have a little look later. Uh, greetings to Gustav, who said, Evening, less Mediterranean and more Phil Mitchell. Do you think I'm a bit more like Phil Mitchell? I hope not. I wouldn't want to be like Phil Mitchell. I wish I had a little bit more ear, though. It is gradually falling out completely, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, back to the quiz last night. Yes, uh, Ray Reynolds' team came second and they, they won six bottles of Pale Ale. Which <laughs> a ghastly drink that is. Uh, uh, the Short Planks won last night. They're a regular team. They used to come every week. Not so much now. Their team's got a little bit smaller, but they won last night. And it's the first time in a long time that they won, so I'm quite pleased about that. Uh, some bloke came in and sat 
right next to the... No, actually, that's a lie. No, he didn't sit there. Um, he was sitting right next to the speaker. Now, there is only one speaker that I use there. And he... Can I just have a little bit of my, my tea here? And he sat... Do you like this? That's my Disneyland Paris Cup. As purchased to me by my uh, great nieces, Olivia and Evie, and great nephew, Harry. There we are, when we went to Disneyland Paris last November. Um, what was I saying? Oh, I forgot what was I saying now. <laughs> uh, Paylow, we've done the... We, I said Paylow, didn't I? Oh, sorry, I've lost the plot now. Lost the plot. Yeah, the short blanks, they haven't won for ages and ages. So it was uh, nice of them to uh, uh, win last night. Now, do you ever buy something and you're not quite sure why you bought it? Oh, by the way, there's a phone line open now. If you want to call in at any point, feel free to do so. The phone line's up there now. 0208 344 Local London number, OK? 0208 344 If you've got Skype, you can Skype in, boys and girls. My Skype in name is United Kingdom Talk. So you've got the phone number, 0208 344 Or indeed, you can Skype in. Skype in. That is at uh, United Kingdom Talk. Oh, thank you. Yes, Richard said sat next to the speaker. Yeah. So there was a bloke there. There was a table of three people talking. And, uh, of course, I've only got one speaker in there. That's all I've got. One speaker on a stage. I switched on. Good evening, everyone. Right. Can you turn that down? I said, well, we're doing the quick. Well, can you turn it down a bit? This is the only speaker I've got. And started moaning again. You know, that's unfortunate. There is only one speaker in there. And uh, it just happened to be sitting right next to where they are. When I used to DJ at um, weddings and things like that, you'd always get someone come up and sit right next to the speaker and complain bitterly that it was too loud. Why do they do that? Or the smoke machine. They, they, they might be sitting right at the end of like a school hall or something. And then they see the smoke and, <laughs> oh, can you turn it off? <laughs> They're nowhere near the blooming smoke. If you're wondering what that noise is, I've got a little camera. Oh, actually, that's not my one. Uh, I've got a, 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 a door camera, a doorbell camera. And my mate's got one as well. And whenever someone walks past, or perhaps a small animal walks... Oh, most of them are small animals around here, to be honest. I can't wait to move, to be honest. Oh, ghastly people live around here, dear. I've, I live in my own little bubble. You know, I've got, I've got deflector shields and all that around my house so that no one can get to me. Yes, absolutely. Oh, dreadful place. To, dreadful place. Uh, so I've got this camera. Every time, every time there's a movement that goes past it, a little noise goes off. So I've turned that off so it doesn't disrupt this wonderful show that you are enjoying tonight. It really is. And thank you to those of you that have uh, shared the show to your walls as well. That's always very much appreciated. It's very kind of you to do that. Um, yeah, and they'd see a bit of smoke. <coughs> oh, can you turn it off? And the smoke would be nowhere near them. Absolutely nowhere near them. Strange and mysterious people. Yes, indeed. Now, yeah, do you ever buy stuff that you, you and you don't know why you've bought it? I, I ordered these on Amazon the other day and they've come now. Look, giant playing cards. Why have I bought these? I've got no use for these. <laughs> I've got no use for these whatsoever. Dear me, I, look, I haven't even opened them yet. Only six. I think there were six quid they were. Plastic coated playing cards. I suppose I could have a giant... Giant game of Snap or Solitaire with myself, seeing as there's no one else here other than the cat, who's getting messy by the day, I have to tell you. I've got an elderly cat. She's 18 years old. She's a terrible mess there. Completely incontinent. All around the kitchen, up the walls. It's Oh, oh it's awful. I'm not joking. I, it's, it's so bad, I won't even film it for you and show you. Bless her up. But we keep her going as long as we can. As long as she's not, she doesn't seem to be in any pain. Here we are. Gigantic playing cards. Oh, yes. Why have I bought these? I don't know. That's me, the Joker. Oh, look at these. They're great. Look at these. Now, what fun can I have with these? Any suggestions? Do you want to pick a card? <laughs> How do you shuffle them like this? <laughs> da, da, da. Oh, I can do play your cards right. Yeah. How can we do this? No, we can't. I'm going to put the cards up. We've covered. We could do play your cards, right? Couldn't we? Or something like that. What do you reckon? What can I do with this? <laughs> uh, Richard. Hello, Richard. Says asthmatics are the worst with smoke machines. Then you see them outside smoking a cigarette. Oh, absolutely, Richard. Absolutely. 
I've seen that time and time again. I saw people, I remember being in Florida years and years ago. And uh, I'm a little bit asthmatic. Sometimes it's quite bad. I actually, no, that's a lot. It hasn't been bad now for years. Uh, about three years ago, it suddenly became better. Hello, Jamie. Welcome to the show. Uh, about three years ago, it suddenly became better for, for no reason. And I hardly ever need that little blue thing anymore. I was using the brown preventer thing, but I don't use that either anymore. And I haven't done for two months or so. Just don't seem to need it anymore. So it can't be pollen, can it? Because it's, you know, with this hot weather and all that, that we've had, um, presumably the pollen count would have been high in this this hot weather, wouldn't it? I assume. But uh, anyway, years ago, I went to this thing in Florida. Uh, I was on holiday. It was like a rodeo show and you get a sit-down dinner. I say a sit-down dinner. It was like beans and sausages. You know, it was like a Wild West show. And everything was fine. And then these horses came in. <laughs> Round and round they were going. I lost, oh, my chest is a bit, got that thing out. And it, it was quite, it actually got quite bad very quickly. So I, I went outside. And similarly, there was lots of other people outside who had had to leave. And it, <laughs> like that. Uh, but of course, they're all smoking, Richard. They were all standing there smoking. How stupid can you be? Now, what can I do with these playing cards? Any suggestions? Eh? <laughs> I don't know why, why have I bought these? Could I put them up there? I could put my, I could do my phone number. Oh no, I haven't got an O, have I? Is there any O? 10, 11, one, two, no, there's no O in the cards, is there? I suppose I could make the eight as, a, eight as an O. Here we are. I love them. Look. Which are you? A king or a queen? That's a suggestion. Are you a king or a queen? So have you ever bought anything that you don't really need? Play your cards right would be excellent with these, wouldn't it? Dun 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 Used to love that with Bruce Forsyth. There we are. Gigantic playing cards. I should love to think of something to do with these. Well, I'm really not quite sure. I like player cards, right? Used to love that show with Brucey Forsyth. They sacked him for being too old, didn't they? Do you remember that? That's quite a few years ago now. We've not heard a single thing from him, have we, for a couple of years now? Old Bruce. Not even you remember. Was it last year that... um. The, the wonderful Ronnie Corbett died and he didn't even go to his funeral. We've not heard a thing from Bruce Forsyth, have we? For two years now. I'm very worried about him. I hope we, we see him back on the telly. You know what I'd like to see with Bruce? I'd like to see them bring back just one more series of his uh, excellent generation game. He was great at it. So was Larry Grayson, uh, the other bloke. What's his name now? The comedian bloke. Oh, I can't think what his name was. Um, who was the other bloke who did Generation Game? David, was it, da oh gosh, can't remember now. He was a very famous comedian. He's got very fat now, hasn't he? Massively fat. Jim Davidson. Jim Davidson. I wasn't too keen on him. But uh, certainly Bruce Forsyth and Larry Grayson, who's uh, sadly no longer with us. They were good hosts. I remember the Larry Grayson theme tune. ba da ba 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 shut the door. And enjoy the generation game. Do you remember that? Larry Grayson is here to play. So, bum, 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 bum. Shut that door. Da, 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 da. And he'd come out of a door, wouldn't he, Larry Grayson? Great. But I'd like to see Bruce Forsyth brought back for just one more series of uh, of his generation game. I think that would be excellent, really. Excellent. OK, 0208144 if you want to give us a, uh, a call today. Have you ever bought anything and you don't really understand why? Like those cards I've just bought, then do let us know. 0208144 uh, Jamie said, how about a magic trick with the cards? Pick up 52. I'm not throwing them on the cart on the floor now. Thank you very much. I don't think that's a very, very sensible idea, do you now, dear? Throwing all my cards on the floor. I think you just want me to bend over so you can have a look at my bottom. Is that what it is? <laughs> Terrible I am. Uh, no luck with the hard drive. Remember my hard drive recorder? My um, Humax, my Humax FreeSat recorder has, uh, I, I think, given up the ghost. Uh, ben Parker, who's a very good friend of mine, has suggested I download a program called XPVR, plug it into the computer and it should be able to read it. But I've done that with a hard drive. Uh, nothing at all. 
can't see it. I don't know if I've got to do something else to it. I might give him a ring later. I thought Ben was doing some karaoke tonight down in um, uh, King's Cross at, uh, oh, what's the name of the pub? Can't think of it now. And I was going to go down there uh, because he said, bring it down to him together with a couple of hard drives and he see if he can fix it for us. Uh, but I don't think he's there tonight. I was just looking on his web, on his um, Facebook page now and he's not mentioned the karaoke at all tonight, so I'll assume it's not on and uh, I won't waste my time going down there. I might give him a call later and see if I can, see if I can get that going. All right, uh, some news stories today. Now, yesterday... Oh, hang on, why have I thrown that away? I've got other bits and pieces on there. Yesterday, uh, Tuesday night, <coughs> I was telling you about uh, I, I could never go to Glastonbury or anything like that. That whole camping deal and the toilets and all that business. It's, it's just not my cup of tea. It really isn't. But I could, and, and then I, I kind of went off tangent. I was meant to continue talking about Glastonbury. Um, uh, and I went off tangent and started talking about my camping antics, you know, years ago when I was in the Scouts and that. Uh, but apparently you don't have to sleep roughly if you go to Glastonbury. Now, this was about a month ago, this article here in the Super Sora Way Daily Mail. And it says, um, oh, where's my blooming glasses now? There they are. It says, for the vast majority, a visit to Glastonbury Festival involves very little sleep in a stuffy, cramped tent surrounded by thousands of other campers in a damp field. I mean, it must be awful. Especially, you know, Perhaps even worse, because it was very hot at Glastonbury this year. That must be even worse than it is if it's damp. Because there's no escaping from that heat, is there? None at all. If you've got a bit of cash to spare, you can have, perhaps you're thinking about this next year. Here's an idea for you. You can enjoy all the fun of camping while not getting muddy or being away from a flushing toilet. See, that's the thing to me. It's two things that really put me off. Number one... A non-flushing toilet. Basically, you go in these little huts and there's a hole in the ground. Or in the little cubicles. Where, again, it's just a hole and a load of chemicals in there. And it's not just you that's using it. These things are full to the brim, dear. Awful. Awful. It says one of the most luxurious options for glampers... That's like posh camping. Is the pop-up hotel a collection of 200 rooms in the forms of bell tents, spacious yurts. <laughs> I like that word. Yurts. And even gypsy caravans spread over a 15-acre field, about 10 minutes walk away from the official festival site. That's not too bad, is it? 10 minutes. 10 minutes for luxury, for proper toilets. For almost proper bedrooms. I wonder if they've got actual beds in there, have they? If you don't want to trudge to the stage with everyone else, you can be ferried in golf buggies or even fly there as the, as the site has its own helipad. But if you decide to pitch up at the Worthy View campsite in the festival grounds itself, there are still plenty of options for the middle class glamper. You can pay anything up to a thousand pounds for the five day festival on top of the £238 cost of a standard ticket. That's what it was this year. Presumably, it'll be a little bit more last year. Campers have access to showers and toilets as well as hot food and their own car park. Just a short walk away. This is more like it, surely. Besides the eye-catching tents, they are colour-coded to denote their way and cost and help guests find their way around. There are also wooden cabins known as pod pads. Oh, pod pads. And luxury Mongo style yurts. Mongolian style yurts. <clears throat> Tents on the site range in price from around £285 for a two person scout style for five nights and up to £995 for an eight person classic scout style tent. A bunk pad. Now, what's that one there? That's a. Let me just... Uh, I mean, there's not many pictures on this, unfortunately. Um, let's have a look here. Uh, yes, I mean, there's certainly... You can, you can see how they're like... Now, this this is where you would... You know, most people would be staying here, you see. Look at these. Hundreds and hundreds of tents here. But here's the other ones. Look. 
We've got scout tents, and look how nicely laid out they are. I mean, there's a big old do in it. Can you imagine going to have to set up all that business, wouldn't you? Gosh. Um, let's have a look. A bunk pad, which sleeps up to four, costs £725. These spacious structures have solid walls and floors and a six foot, foot eight inch high solid roof. Ah, so, I mean, that would be better if, in you know, when, when the sun's out, surely. Because you imagine being in a tent and that sun coming down on that tent. It must be like an oven going in there. They come with two bunk beds with foam mattresses. Oh, this is more like it. This is. A 12-foot yurt with a space for four is priced at around £750 for five nights. For those taking their own tents, a pitch is included in the ticket price. Finally, relief came from the 30 degrees centigrade heat wave yesterday. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, at the festivals. Um, because the temperature... But despite feeling cooler, um, it was a far cry from last year's festival, which was deemed the muddiest ever. So there we are. But uh, no mention of air conditioning. God sake, we can't go anywhere else like that with that air conditioning. I mean, it's like going to you know, somewhere like Australia in the middle of summer. Or New York. And have you ever been to New York in June, July, August? Oh, that's hot there. Oh, you wouldn't survive in your room with no air conditioning, dear. Too hot. Jamie says, I saw an article last year. Cars had to be dragged out and dragged out of the mud by tractors. How anyone can sleep in a tent with others amazes me. Well, I used to do it, Jamie. You know, years ago, when I was in the Scouts, we used to all go camping and all that business. You know, we'd all sleep in a tent together. And it was hot and smelly. You, know, you imagine, <laughs> you imagine look, sort of 13, 14, 15, 16 year old boys in a tent with their socks off. It used to stink in those tents. But we never used to notice that, funnily enough. But of course, you know, as you get older, I suppose you get a little bit more. Um, you don't you don't want to do that anymore. I don't think I could sleep on a floor again. I talked about this the other day. You know, you, you sleep on the floor. Not many of us had a uh, little foam mattresses, which, to be honest, were a complete waste of time. The foam was about that thick. I think they were carry more or something. Was it carry more? That might be the name of the rucksack. I had the rucksack and, and the sleeping bag and all that. We used to go hiking and just set up a tent randomly somewhere and, you know, out of the way, you know, so no one would notice you. And that's where you'd sleep for the night. Get water out of a river. Not knowing if it had been polluted further up the way. Yeah, it was a wonderful time we used to do that business. Absolutely wonderful time, yeah. 0208144377 if you want to call in today. Uh, let me see here. Oh, I was talking to Wendy last night. Uh, and a little bit of a chat with Wendy. You, you, if you're watching the show on Tuesday, um, I did say that the hairdresser, the lady who cuts my hair down in uh, Wokingham, uh, is going to Scotland for a holiday. And when we checked it out, uh, a chap had told her that it's only six hours to drive to Scotland. Oh, no, they, he told her seven hours, actually. So I got my sat-nav out. Uh, I use Waze. I used to use TomTom, -tom, but I use Waze now because it's all free. And um, I I fired it up and I typed in where we, we were in Wokingham. So I just typed in how long to get to Glasgow. And it came up as six hours. And I was surprised at that because I always thought it took 10, 12 hours to get to Scotland. No, not according to this sat-nav. And uh, Wendy came back to me in a private message and was saying, she said, don't believe that sat nav. It's got to take you 10 to 12 hours to get there. What it can't do is tell you how long you're sitting in traffic and all that. Well, and I said to her, well, actually, it does. It does involve traffic as well. That's the whole idea of having, well, I mean, part of the idea of having a sat nav, to be honest. You know, I'm not very good at finding my way around. I don't know about you. I was... <laughs> I used to for a little while, I did run my own scout uh, cub group, and it was twice we got lost. <laughs> I don't know why on earth I ever thought I could read a map, and I could. Well, I mean, I can kind of read a map, but I, I just look at it, and if I, I don't know, I still get lost. And I was no good at taking compass bearings or anything like that. And there were two occasions where we we got back instead of being back at like. You know, the scout headquarters at like 10 o'clock, it would like like midnight. 
<laughs> parents were going mad. And this was in the days before mobile phones. I just get lost easily. So that's one reason for having a sat nav. But when I go to work, I, I do know the way to all the jobs that I do, the wonderful jobs I've got at the moment. I have. I love all the jobs I do. There was one that I really hated, and that's gone now. I'm so pleased not to be there anymore. I hated it. Don't know why. I think I just got bored in the same place all the time. All the jobs at the moment I love. And I know the way there. What I don't know is where the traffic is. Now, it's all very well sitting here on a computer just before you leave to go to work and typing in, you know, where's the traffic? And then you set out on the journey. Well, traffic appears as you're on your way and you don't know about that while you're going. Suddenly someone breaks down in front of you. Um... Or, uh, you know, it might be an accident or just a lot of traffic going in the same direction. Well, you don't know that. Once you've set out, you're at the mercy of these things that happen randomly in front of you. With the sat-nav, uh, a lot of them now, they, they have the traffic as standard. Waze uses traffic uh, information. I know TomTom -tom as well, but we've been having a little bit of a problem with the TomTom -tom one. The traffic would stop working for some reason. Don't know why. So um, that, that's the idea of having a sat-nav. And presumably, my sat-nav would tell me that on the way to Scotland from Wokenham, if there's any problems, it will tell me, you know, nine hours, five hours, 12 hours, whatever. But I sat there in the, in the hairdresser and it said, it said just over six hours. That's not going mad. You know, obviously, that's sticking to speed limits and that sort of thing. So... Um, I don't know, really. I think one would have to do the journey. One would have to set out with the sat-nav saying it's going to take six hours or seven hours and then do the journey and just see uh, if it did indeed take six hours. But Wendy was saying, you know, where, certainly where she lives up in uh, Leyland, um, it's always, always traffic there. And uh, she's convinced it would take sort of more than more than those six hours, more like 12, you know, double that, getting stuck in this traffic. But I don't know. I'm not so sure myself because this thing was telling me six hours. So it would be interesting to do that one day. Could you, I mean, does anyone do that? Drive up to Scotland for the day? <laughs> I'm not, not keen on I have been to Glasgow years ago. Um, I wanted to take my sister and my nephew on a plane because they'd never been on a plane before. Uh, this is going back 13, 14, about seven years ago. So uh, I, 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 I took them to Glasgow. I got them to come down here. Where I am, where I live in Bracknell in Berkshire, and uh, we took a, a, a British Airways flight to Glasgow just for the day, just to be on a on a plane. Oh, that was an experience. My sister loved it. She wasn't bothered at all by this plane flight, um, but my nephew, uh, he we we were taxiing round, you know, the plane starts moving, and then he's jumped up from the seat and starts walking towards the door. I said, "What? Well, you can't go. You can't get up." He said, oh, I'm getting off. I don't want to go. I said, well, it's too late. The door's closed. At which point, of course, one of the excellent BA cabin crew came who are on strike at the moment, I think. Are they on strike again? Oh, British Airways, what's going to happen to you? It does worry me, that, about that wonderful company. Years ago, everyone, every airline person I knew aspired to be working for British Airways. Not anymore. It's all gone terribly wrong there. But anyway, in, in those on this particular occasion, this lovely... um. Airline uh, uh, chap steward came running down. Everything all right, sir? I said, oh, it's my nephew. He's really scared now. Oh, right, OK. So at that point, and he crouched down, sat next to him, and he was talking to him and uh, comforting, yeah, comforting, you know, telling him good things and about flying and all that business. Uh, eventually, of course, he had to go sit down because the plane was due to take off. And my nephew is, is now hiding Hiding his, uh, this is Jimmy, incidentally, he's 20 now. He was 13 at the time, I think it was. He was hiding his head in my in my sister's arm, his mum. And, his sister's, and he, he's closed the windows. <laughs> he's closed the windows so they couldn't see anything outside. And then we got up in the air and it was fine. It wasn't turbulent at all. It was a very smooth flight. Got down at the other end. And um, had a look around Glasgow for the day. We, we just went to the shops. Went to the shops. Went to this build build a bear shop, which looks fantastic. You know, you you buy these bears, <clears throat> and it's just the outline of the bear, and then you go to the stuffing thing, and you put it on this machine, and it stuffs it with cotton wool type stuff. 
and then you buy these accessories. Um, when you first buy the bear, it's not, not for it is five or six pounds, something like that. You put the stuff in, and you want a pair of glasses, well, that's two quid. You want some socks, well, that's three quid. You want a little hat, that's another four quid. And by the time you've, been, you've made this bit, it's like 45 quid for a blooming bear, dear. God's sake. They're so expensive, that build, build a bear type thing. <clears throat> but if you've got a child and you've got a bit of money to spend and you want a day out, yeah, do that. Because you can be in there for an hour or so. That's quite a nice experience. So we, we walked around Glasgow. It was a bit um, dilapidated, I have to say. Uh, I've been to Edinburgh as well. That's a very beautiful city, Edinburgh. Really is. Glasgow, uh, they were having a lot of building work done. I think there was a, a new, I mean, it's probably, it, it must be built by now, but all these little shops were being knocked down. So presumably, they've got a big shopping centre there now, something like that, I would assume. Scotland for me is the Highlands. I, the Highlands are beautiful, just stunning place. I would like to go up there again at, uh, at some point. So yeah, that was my little uh, uh, plane journey there. Now, what were we talking about? I've forgotten again now. Oh, it's useless, isn't it? I'm so useless. Oh, yes, that was it. We were talking about Wendy. So, uh, yes, so she reckons 12 hours. I'll have to do the journey at some point and, uh, and come back to you on that, all right? 0208144377, my phone number, if you want to call in today. Uh, good news at the Slimming World for Adam this week. Congratulations to Adam, who's lost another pound in weight. As you know, I went on Tuesday this week, and I'm now down a stone. I've lost a stone since I started going six weeks ago. It's very easy. Uh, I did have my nephew's wife ask me, how how have you lost that so quickly? Well, she obviously hasn't been keeping up with the show, has she, dear? You know, she should keep up with the show, then she'd know how it all works. You've got to join Slimming World, because you're £5 a week. And that's it. It's not a lot of money, is it? £5 a week. And um, uh, you'll get on like that, OK? Uh, some items of news that I've got today. Oh, uh, hang on a minute. No, I forgot. Uh, was it Danny? Hello, Danny who put a post yesterday, am I the only one that think doctors receptionists are the biggest jobs worths ever? It really drives me mad having to repeat myself to at least two people on the phone before I've even got an appointment. Then I have to repeat myself again to the front desk. I walk into the doctor's room and the first thing he says is, what can I do for you? They don't seem to talk to each other, do they? They don't know. I must say, it's not as bad as a doctor's... Um, uh, uh, it's not as... not. Anywhere near as bad at the doctor I go to. In fact, <clears throat> last week I went in there um, about a sore throat or a dry throat, which is still dry, to be honest, although not as bad as it was. And um, I walked in there and she says, um, yeah, can I ask what it's about? I said, yeah, I've got a bit of a dry throat at the back there. It's been going on for a few weeks now. OK, she says, right, let me see when the first appointment is. And she, Oh, she said, can you can you wait now? I said, yeah, what, uh, have you got some experience? She said, I had one drop out this morning. I can fit you in in 15 minutes. Wow. I mean, they're pretty quick there, to be honest, but that is the quickest ever. So I sat there and I went to see the doctor. But again, you know, I walked in. She says, um, and how can I help you today? Well, didn't you talk to the woman on reception when she did her typing? Doesn't it appear on her screen in front of you? <clears throat> like that. You would think it would, wouldn't you? But apparently it doesn't. So I told her, and out came that little thing, and she says, hmm, she got, got hay fever at all. I said, I don't think so. She said, try some antihistamine tablets. So she gave me these antihistamine tablets. So I've been having one a day uh, ever since. Um, what's that there? I've been having one a day ever since. And it has got a bit better, but it is still dry, right at the back of my throat. Actually, you can probably see me keep doing this now, haven't you? I'll have to, I'll have to go soon, because I've run out of tea. I should have brought in some more water or something like that. I'm as dry as a dry as the bottom of a buddy's cage. I really am this morning. Um, it, it, and he goes on. Yeah, he said the first thing he says, "What can I do for it?" Bugs the hell out of me. Ran over, and um, <laughs> he he puts a little picture on there as well. What are your experiences with doctors? Do you get your appointment quite quickly? Do you have to wait a long time? Do let us know. Put a message on there. Or uh, call in 0208-144-3477. Um, and he's put a little picture there. It says, it says, it takes seven years to train a doctor and two minutes for the receptionist to think she's one as well. <laughs> That's true. It's true. Someone's uh, put a, a couple of notes under his status there. Uh, Matt says, my new surgery is good. That the doctor reads the note the receptionist makes or you book online. 
and they can now and they now know what you want when you walk in. Previous surgeries were different. Asked at every point and sick of repeating. By the time you see someone who could actually help, then usually they don't. <laughs> Yeah, I can do that online thing now as well. I registered and got my um, online thing. Hang on, let me just click that. Patient access. Does that work? Register. Oh, I've done that already. Well, how do I... Um... Oh, sign in. There it is. Sign in. Remember my ID. Sign in. And uh... so does that come up, what she did for me? They do say... Um, med view medical record. Let's have a look at that. Let's have a look at that. Uh, they do say, no, no my, my visit as, isn't on there. Oh, I see. It just says um, current problems, past problems, and past problems minor. Past problems significant, past problems minor, and then current problems up there, which is uh, quite interesting, isn't it? Hmm. But they do say when you sign up to that, you know, you must be prepared to see to see stuff that perhaps you don't want to see apparently i don't know why that is i mean i suppose you could have something on there you know you could be a lot iller than you actually think you are can't you eh <laughs> come on hurry up and ring jamie because i'm going to go soon dear my 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 uh, my throat is giving up i'm afraid if you want to give us a call nice and quickly 0208144 uh, 3477 is the phone number so thanks for that danny that's uh, interesting that is uh, Alison says here, same, our receptionists ask for details. And when you say, I don't wish to say, they get humpy with you. Or you tell them, got to see the doctor. And he asks, what can I do for you? He hasn't, he hasn't the bird downstairs. <laughs> hasn't the bird downstairs. <laughs> Alison says, what can I do for you? What hasn't the bird downstairs told you already? Because she knows, does my head in. <laughs> Is that what you actually say to her? <laughs> How funny is that? Good. Excellent. Uh, some news stories for you today then, boys and girls. Uh, new, uh, now, I've seen these. Oh, there's a phone call coming in now. At last, we got a phone call. I didn't think anyone was going to call in today. Hello, who's calling in on line 278? Uh, hello, um, Jamie Clark. Hello, Jamie. All right. Uh, yes, I'm not too bad. Um, what it was I wanted to ring about today was um, the awkward things that people have um, rung in about. Um, I bought a... Oh, I can't remember what it was now. It was oh, a, the, th the things you bought that you didn't necessarily... You don't know why you've bought them. Is that... Yes. Yeah? Where, whereabouts are you, Jamie? You're in London? Uh, yes, I'm in North London. Oh, whereabouts? Uh, Islington. Oh, that's where I was last yeah, night doing me uh, doing yeah doing my quiz night last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was in Stoke. I'm, I live in Stoke Newington. Okay. Go on. What um, have you bought then? Uh, I bought a. It goes around your waist, and it's for your camera. Right. Um, and you stick your camera on it, and you just carry your camera around on the outside of your body. But I've never used it. No. Still, it, it was it expensive? Go on. Was it expensive? Uh, it was about three or four quid. It was, oh. it was cheap and plastic, so... Yeah, so probably... that's, but that's four pounds. You probably didn't need to spend, you see. It's like the cards I've bought here, you know, six quid. Yeah. And I think sometimes you can get, you know, you're walking through some and you see something bright and shiny and you must have it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to think of other stuff that I've bought like this. I don't really buy much myself. Um, uh, only for like doing these shows and things like that, you know. When it when it comes yeah. to a piece of equipment for this, for this, I don't mind spending the yeah. money. Uh, but I don't really go clothes shopping very often. All the shirts that you see, there's nothing new other than that one that my mate, uh, my mate bought me a shirt while he was on holiday. That's new. Uh, I don't really yeah, have any new yeah. shirts. Uh, the jackets, I suppose, they're a couple of years old, some of those now as well. Uh, but I, I like go shopping for clothes maybe twice a year, about twice a yeah. year, and then I do a big one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually in the sale time, so it'd be just after Christmas, we go down to this place in Oxfordshire, uh, and also for uh, uh, birthdays. And that's quite, quite yeah. nice when you can get a load of bags at one time, you know? Yeah, yeah. You get some good stuff on Amazon, clothes-wise. 
De- definitely. Sometimes going to like Primark, you can collect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get. We got one open. Clothing. We've got one opening here. In um, we we had the um, uh, the town centre was all rebuilt and um, it's it's almost ready to open. I think it's a couple, another couple of months, and it's opening uh, in September. And it's amazing what they've done. They not, a couple of years yeah. ago they came down and knocked down all the old shops, which were, it was all open and. Uh, a bit nineteen ninety early nineteen seventies, you know the sort of thing, don't you? Sort of one yeah, level. yeah. Well, they've knocked that all down and bought these these massive glass structures and hundreds of people working in this building site. And you just wonder how the hell they they all manage to to work together, you know? Because obviously, yeah, you know, yeah. the bloke the bloke putting the trees in can't be there when there's a bloke putting pipes underground or wires there. And then the paving stone bloke can't be there while they're trying to dig. And it just amazes me how it's how they're all able to function together. Hundreds of people on this building site. It's a big old job, yeah. I tell you. Wonderful it is. There's one, there's a Primark down, I can't remember where it was. It was near Marble Arch. Oh, yes. Because I'm quite a fast-paced walker. Right. And I like to get around the shots quick. As oh, me too. Can. Me no, too. No, no dawdling. Much. No dawdling. I'm like that in, in, in the supermarket. I want to be round as quickly as possible, fill up my basket and get, get out again as quick as possible, yeah. That's it. Because I, I can't know when it was, but I went around the Primark in, um, in Marble Arch. Oh, yes. Everyone walks so slow. Yes, yes. It's like your entire day is just spent in that, in that shop. You can't get out until you've got, got what you've wanted. But everyone walks so slow. You've got to adjust to their speed. It's annoying, not... though, isn't it? Oh, annoying. Exactly. Have you noticed what I can't work out in Marble Arch, right? You must have yep. noticed the amount of uh, very rich-looking Arabian people that's with it, yeah. suitcases who buy yep. loads and loads and loads of stuff and they fill up these gigantic super ca- uh, 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 cases with this stuff. Now, these are clearly very rich people. You've seen the hotels around there. They're very expensive oh, yeah. hotels, two, three, four hundred pounds a night plus. Now, why are they in Primark? I, 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 I don't get it. I don't get it. It's for high end. You would think they'd be in the Ted Baker's shop in in Oxford yeah. Street or the Ralph Lauren. No, they're in Primark. <laughs> and and they get into these big flash cars outside. I don't get it. What's all that about? I, I, I don't. <laughs> Mind you, I, I wore I wear um Lonsdale T shirts. And years yeah. ago I was DJing a, a place in King's Cross uh, called the Golden Lion. It's not there anymore. And mm. Uh, a lot of places closed down, you know, when I'm there, funnily enough. But um, <laughs> and there was a group of Italian boys in there. Mm. And they've come up to say, wow, where did you get that? Oh, Sports Direct. <laughs> wow. These, these are, and they were very highly sought after items in Italy. Can you believe that? Yeah. Lonsdale. Strange, isn't it? You know, I, don't, I just suppose just it, it depends what is the... the the brand of the time in whatever country you are. You go to America and you can buy all this Ted Baker stuff and the Ralph Lauren stuff and, and all sorts of stuff. And it's at least a third less, sometimes half the price of what we pay here. Exactly, yeah. Although not such a good deal now because the exchange rate is dire for America. It's something like $1.24 to the pound. I don't know if that would get any better or, or, or what, but I remember going once... Uh, and getting nearly two two dollars sixty to the pound. Now it's like one dollar oh. twenty. Yeah, it's a long time ago now. You got any oh, holidays yeah. booked? Pardon? Are you going anywhere on holiday this year, Jay? Uh, no, I, I went to Tenerife in um, I think it was in April for right. ten nights. Ah, it was yes, my it was fr- beautiful. A friend of mine uh, does a lot of work over there. Is a a performing yeah. artist on Tenerife and. Um, uh, yeah. that, who, who did you go with? Uh, went with my other half. Right. So we stayed and you quite, had an... close, to the, quite close to the beach. So was it? go out the hotel and you pretty much... What's the nightlife like? Is that quite good there? Uh, yeah, there's quite a bit to offer down right. by the seafront there. Uh, there's 
some quite quite half decent um, live artists. Oh, what singers and all, all that? Yes, the singers. Uh, we've got tribute bands, everything. I really. like you. You get a good tribute band. It's almost the same as seeing the as seeing the people. My sister likes Beyond. I think it's Beyond again. You know the ABBA tribute bands. Yeah. Do you know them? She's been to see yeah. those um and uh various others i think uh my my nephew funnily enough it, him and two of his mates they went to see a rat pack tribute so it'd be like frank sinatra dean martin who's the other one? Oh, there's three of them isn't there i can't think who the other one is now no, oh, yeah, I, I, I ain't that old dear i don't really know <laughs> don't, don't, don't find you them. know frank sinatra please do us uh, a favor will you you know, I, I, Frank I do know Frank Sinatra. Huh? I, know, I, I do like a bit of a. Do you? Was there any karaoke bars down there? Oh. It's oh, it's not, not your really. Not your thing, no. I'd I, I'd be the kind of person that would want to walk walk past it, but listen okay. to it at the same time. So. Fair enough. What about your other half? Is he a karaoke person? She, she can be at times. It's all really. What does she sing? Anything when she's she easy, don't she gets drunk on a on a Friday night. She and... don't do that awful song. I will always love you, and I right. will always love you. Oh, it's ghastly that song, isn't it? Oh <laughs> God, that would, that would drive me around the bend. I would get fed up to the hill. Have you got any children with you or not? Not yet. Uh, no, thank no God. No, so it's just the two of you, no was it? Children. No children just yet. So you can, so you can yeah. go out every night and sort of enjoy it and get a little bit tanked up as well. Did you have the full English yeah, breakfast it, while it you were all, there? It all really depends, really. If I, it all depends if I have work in the morning, but right. I usually work Monday to Fridays. So. All right. What do you do? Uh, I work at Paddington train station doing customer service. Oh, right. Okay. Not, not, actually, the... not actually on the platforms in, a, in an office or, or what? It's like a information desk. I'm with you. On the main concourse at Paddington. Okay, I must come past you on occasions. Um, when I'm driving to North London, either Kings Cross mm. or um, or uh, or Islington, usually yeah. it'll go over the A40 yeah. straight there. Oh yeah, that's, right? that's pretty much. Us. But sometimes it's um, it's it's chock a block, so it will take mm. me off the A40. And then back down and underneath the A40 and straight on. And yeah. I cross a set of lights, although sometimes I'll go left, but other times I'll cross mm. a set of lights, go a little bit further back down towards Chelsea. Would it be Chelsea? No, Notting Hill. Towards Notting Hill. Yeah. 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 But then I turn left at a set of traffic lights and there's a steep hill going up steepish yeah and there's a lot of italian restaurants down there and then there's a big hotel possibly the hotel metropole yes and then i carry on and i think i go past paddington station on the left would i be right i think no i thought it was on the right no no there's nothing on the right no. that's just shops and houses on the right I must be going down the different road then. Oh, okay, maybe so. Yeah, I'm pr I probably drive past you a few times at, at night time. Do you do shift work or, or are you sort of nine uh, to five? I pr I pretty much do whatever they give me if I'm asleep. If I'm asleep, which is usually well, you sleep about on the job in the morning. <laughs> um, so if they ring me, they say, "Can you come in at ten o'clock?" What well, they pretty much? Are you on zero then, hours? Pardon? You're not on zero hours, are you? Zero hours contract? No, huh? no, no. Ah, so you... I, I, I do work shift, shift right. hours. I only, I only do the morning and afternoons. And you enjoy but that? Sometimes. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. Yeah, it's quite... It's a good job. Do you get free train nice. travel yeah, as well? Yes, free travel as well. Ah, uh, excellent. 75% off. So you can go all, all over the place. Do you, so. do you ever consider going on holiday in this country? Well, it, with, the, with the current weather, with it raining as much, well, a, a, as much rain as we've had, right? I wouldn't really consider it. But no, I used to go on holiday quite a lot to uh, Great Yarmouth. 
Oh yes, yes, Great Yarmouth down. Uh, is it North? Is that Norfolk or Suffolk? Norfolk. Norfolk. Great Yarmouth. Yeah. Su- yeah. Suffolk. I think it's south of Ipswich. Is yeah. Suffolk. Ah, it right. Is... Yeah. We used to go to a Pontins. We, we've been to a Pontins down there, possibly called Seacroft. I'm not sure. Maybe called Seacroft. I don't think it's there. I anymore. know there's a Pontins in Hemsby. That's, That's now right. shut down. There's Hemsby. I think there's only about four or five of them left now. Hemsby. Prestaton. Oh, Hemsby what? shut down, I think. Oh, is it? I think there, there's I a think couple in that sort of area. Wow. I know Hastings still. Hastings. I don't know. Yeah. What, I don't think they've got one. And it might be a haven in Hastings. Because I quite like the caravan holidays now. You know, you just drive, and yeah. you drive yeah. two hours in your car and you're there. The only thing is if you've got a noisy family in the fa- in the caravan next to you, because it's it, they're not very soundproof, unfortunately, these caravans. Um, That's it. <laughs> yeah, which is a shame. Well, it's lovely to talk to you, Jamie. Also, yes, you said that about Edinburgh. Yes, uh, I used to. Well, I still do. Um, I go like ghost hunting and all that. Oh, do you really? How yeah, fascinating! I, I, I'm quite quite big into the uh, ghost hunting. Okay, and it's not like an official group or anything that I go with. Um, we go up and down like the country. Yes. In like search of these proper ghosts, yeah, yeah. Well, pro- proper like, ghosts proper, rather than pretend areas, rather than pretend ones. And have you had many experiences? Uh, I went to Edinburgh Vault, and that was back in oh, I think it was late 2015, right? I think it was November kind of time, and there's about three or four of us. Um, in this in this group, right? And we went down there. We didn't we didn't expect to find anything or hear of anything. And it wasn't until we got right down into the like depths of the of the vaults, and we heard this massive scream, and this door went absolutely mental. It went bang, bang, Ooh. bang. And there's literally only four of us in there, and we were all. All together, and as soon as we heard that noise, we fucking ran. Sorry, excuse my French. It's all right, carry on. And that was probably one of the most frightening experiences of my life. Oh, wow. I mean, I've had some experiences of ghosts over over the years. uh, Yeah, yeah. Three or four. There there are quite some... That I, I was never really frightened, because I I, I do believe yeah. these things exist, you know, and I think... Yeah, um, yeah. I think they need to be respected. I don't. I certainly don't go along with Ouija boards and things like that. I think oh, they're, they're definitely not. I think there's they're... a guy on YouTube that I watch oh, right. um, called Lance Stewart. Yes, and he's played with quite really? a few Ouija boards. And really, as I've seen, like pretty much, it can do harm. Yes, like to you physically and mentally. So mm. I don't like the I've idea of this the finger on the glass moving around. I think you're exactly, asking for yeah. trouble. You know. Uh, exactly, but yeah, I've, yeah. I've had, perhaps for another show, perhaps, uh, I've had a few experiences of ghosts uh, uh, and un- unexplained things in the past, but nothing really that scared me. Only one really yeah. that, that was a little bit um, odd, where yeah, I, was, yeah. I was working at a place called the Vauxhall Tavern. This is years and years ago, and I was doing mm. some wires, and I was, I'd, I'd been left there on my own because I'd been DJing there that night Yeah, yeah. Um, for an amateur talent show. Mm, and yeah. uh, I had to put some more wires in or something. And if everyone had gone to bed or, or the manager had gone upstairs. I was on my own in the bottom in this bar. Oh. And I had to go back behind the bar to do something. And yeah. as I was walking behind the bar, suddenly all these bottles just th- flew out of the shelf on the floor in front of me. That that would be it. I'd be gone. I wouldn't even no, be in the because it didn't scare me, and I and I just said, "Oh, don't be so stupid." And I picked up the bottles, put them back, and carried on. Didn't happen again. Didn't yeah. happen again. Sometimes I think perhaps they want a little bit of attention or something like that. You know, <laughs> I, I don't know really um, how it works. I've had some nice experiences as well over the years. To be honest, um, they're not. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've I've had quite a quite a great amount of good experiences right, but yeah yeah it all really depends on the yes on the place and the atmosphere really yeah. i think interesting that all plays a, plays interesting. a great part and there's you... also a, a train station not far from me i can't remember i can't really remember the name but apparently 
from from what I've heard at work, there's a train that pulls into the station. There's nobody on the train or anything. It's it oh, is right. apparently where's that quite frequently. Where's that? Pardon? Where's that? I, I don't I don't really know. I I haven't been the one to ask. Wow. Them yet. I'm wow. a bit afraid that if I go there, I'll. Well, but that, that's that that's that you're 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 looking for these things. You you need to yeah. you know you've got to expect to find them if you're looking. I suppose. How can you be yeah, afraid? But, but yeah, yeah. It's, there, there to, is, to me, but, it's just it's it's like life on a different level. You know, a, a completely different yeah. sort of platform of life or something that we don't understand. Uh, I, I I certainly don't believe that we are like the only things here. It's like these exactly. people that say, you know, we are the only planet with life. I mean, that's 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 outrageous to say that. How can how can we be the only planet with life in all our space? No, there's there's life elsewhere. We just haven't found it yet. You know, the worrying exactly. thing is perhaps if they find us first and they want to eat us or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> They're really cannibal. Uh, it's a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you ever so much for calling in Thank tonight. Thank you very much. You look after yourself and I'll say hello to your missus for me, all right? Yeah, I will do. Cheerio, Jamie. Cheerio. Bye-bye Bye. now. How oh, lovely to have a call in uh, like that right at the end of the show there. All right, boys and girls, uh, we're finished up there. Uh, just a couple of uh, late messages coming. Oh, hello, Simon. I haven't heard from you for more. Hello, Simon, who says, good evening, Mr. Chop Chop. Good evening. Uh, it wasn't, no, it wasn't Adam on the phone. That was um, uh, Jamie calling in from North London. Uh, Simon says, I work nine to five, Chris. Uh, no, sorry, my mistake. I work nine till five past. Oh, don't start your jokes again. Please, no more jokes. We're due today's birthdays and uh, then we'll disappear, boys and girls, okay? So, happy birthday to... And then it's time for my... So we got, I think my mate's coming around a little bit later. Did he, did he text me back? No, he hasn't texted me back yet. He's coming around a little bit later and we're going to watch some telly tonight, I think. Uh, although, oh, I've got to ring Ben, haven't I, to see if he can give me a hand with my hard disk... Um, uh, record a thing I'm having trouble with. Right, so we've got six birthdays today. Happy birthday to Damo. Happy birthday, 27 years old today. Uh, he ran uh, 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 a little uh, internet radio station uh, for a while. I'm not sure he does that anymore. So happy birthday, Damo. Happy birthday to Christopher Lloyd. Hello, Chris. All right, it's been a few years since I saw you, hasn't it, eh? How old are you now? It doesn't say. You're hiding your age. Happy birthday, Christopher. Nice to see you pop up on my timeline there. Uh, Sean Sirs, uh, excellent DJ, boys and girls. He DJs at the Vauxhall Tavern, I think, on a Sunday. Happy birthday, Sean. Don't know your age, dear. Are you keeping that quiet, are you, my love? Years since I saw you. Happy birthday, Sean. Uh, happy birthday to Stefan Brown. Happy birthday, Stefan. My little friend, my little dance. Are you still dancing? Are you still doing your dancing? Uh, Paul John Neary, who I worked with at uh, the uh, uh, Two Brewers for a number of years in Clapham. Happy birthday, Paul. And happy birthday today to Elliot Brown. So just uh, just six birthdays today, boys and girls. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Damo, Christopher, Sean, Stefan, Paul and Elliot. Happy birthday to you. That's just about my limit. Six names I can just about fit into all that, boys and girls. Uh, otherwise, we just have to read them out at the end, don't we? Uh, that's it for the show this evening. Thank you very much uh, for joining me. Been an absolute pleasure talking to you, as always, uh, on this Thursday night. Just a reminder, gang, uh, tomorrow's show... Uh, we'll be coming to you from uh, Windsor Great Park or Savile Gardens. Uh, we've already been there. We went there today and we had a lovely time. Uh, I've got lots of little bits of videos and stuff to um, uh, put together to show you for tomorrow's show. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thanks very much for your company. Cheerio now.